Hello everybody, uh, you are welcome to clip 3 of part 3 in this course. Part 3 is related to wireless channels and we, we study the, the problems of wireless channels as well as some uh, technologies uh, which uh, like um, have been used to mitigate the problems of the wireless channels. We have seen already in clip 2 the equalizers and also the the diversity diversity techniques uh, now we we talk about uh, interleaving actually interleaving also will provide some um, some diversity and the idea of interleaving is 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 quite easy actually uh, you remember when we talked about um, about uh, channel coding we said that uh, uh, for example in a block channel coding it is possible to correct certain number of bits uh, per packet so for example uh, if we have the packet length let's say uh, 8 bits so uh, uh, then we we can uh, by adding a few redundant bits be able to correct uh, if one bit uh, uh, received an error so it can be corrected of course it, uh, by increasing the number of uh, redundant bits then we will be able to correct even more like two bits or but anyhow always the number of bits to, that uh, can be corrected uh, is always limited okay and uh, we have problem that uh, um, uh, usually, the probability of uh, of bit to be received an error is small when it depends only on like additive noise. So it can be, of course, depends on the signal to noise ratio. But anyhow, that uh, to have more than one bit error in one packet is usually is uh, much much smaller than the probability to have a single bit. And to having two bits error is much much smaller than to have three bits in error and so on. This is when this is in the conventional case on the normal case when we have only additive noise uh, problem or our interference uh, however uh, in some cases that in wireless channel we might also have impulsive noise or uh, because of uh, destructive fading as we have seen before in destructive fading the signal could like uh, the, the the power of the signal the received power of the signal can drop like uh, uh, considerably that it can drop too much and it will stay in that situation for some time duration related to the coherence time of the channel so uh, of course depends on the inverse of the Doppler frequency of the channel so in that in that sense it will stay for some time in in destructive fading situation so in that case this time can be some sometimes like um, maybe millisecond or a few milliseconds and in that sense maybe we we'll lose several packets so the problem that we will not lo lose one bit or two bit but we might lose the whole packet or also several consequent uh, packets together so how to handle this problem how to solve this problem uh, one method is to use this interleaving the interleaving that we take uh, the bits of each packet and we distribute them over larger time so as you can see in this figure for example we have the bits coming in this direction like b0 b1 b2 b3 as you can see this is the pn so uh, of course we have different algorithms to uh, to sort those bits but uh, let, let us take the simplest one so now you can you can see that we convert to them or transfer them from like row to to uh, to columns so we have b0 b1 b2 b3 b4 and then b5 as you can see then when, when we we read them out we read them like in row by row so it becomes b0 b5 ba then b1 so you can see that uh, uh, b1 it, it is not the, the second one anymore it comes now to the one two three four the fourth bit so uh, by by increasing the dimension of this uh, process so we can uh, distribute our bits so we take packet by packet we take the bits of first packet and we distribute them over many other packets so if this packet so the, for example the first packet will contains or, or will contain the bits from different other packets so if the whole 
bucket like like uh, disappeared because of destructive fading for example then uh, uh, actually we, we lost only one bit from each uh, uh, bucket so in that case in the D interleaver we can um, uh, resort them again so in that case if we lost one packet from or sorry one packet from different bits then we will uh, uh, lose one only one bit from each packet which could be substituted or could be corrected by the uh, the, the channel coding so this is the idea actually the idea instead of uh, keeping all bits together we distribute them over time and and or, or, or dif or over different different uh, buckets, this will increase the uh, capability or the uh, reliability of the transmission. Um, uh, don't now uh, care about this one because we are coming when, uh, to this in more details when we talk about the orthogonal division multiple axis or orthogonal frequency division multiple axis. When we uh, then we can talk more about this is what we mean here by serial to parallel and about this IFFT process. Okay, this is this is about interleaving. And now let us talk about the antennas. Uh, uh, as we know that antennas are the first part uh, in the receiver, uh, and also it is the last part in the transmitter. So it is a transducer to convert from like electrical current to electromagnetic wave in the propagation, and also in the receiver it is the transducer to, to transform from electromagnetic wave to electrical current. So bad design of the antenna can lead to failure for the whole communication link, regardless of the complexity of the receiver. So you, you might design like very high sophisticated receiver or very high sophisticated transmitter, but uh, when you use like bad designed antenna, then the whole communication system can, performance can be dropped or even failed. So uh, uh, in, in this part, let us talk a little bit about uh, these antennas and how it, will, uh, it could be used to enhance the communication performance regardless of the channel like uh, uh, challenges. Uh, using multiple antennas actually is very, very important uh, in modern communication system. In modern wireless communication, uh, most of the system is now using uh, multiple antennas. So multiple antennas can be used mainly for three purposes. It can be used for like um, diversity, uh, and we have already seen this in the previous clip, and it can be used for beamforming. And beforming means that we direct the radiation pattern in certain uh, like angle of arrival. Uh, it can be done at the transmitter as well as at the receiver. In, uh, and the idea is to enhance the signal to noise ratio to increase the performance, to differentiate or to separate between different users, uh, to to enhance the signal from certain direction to uh, like uh, reduce the reception from other directions for example if we have interference or jamming signal and so on so it has many many important applications this beam forming and the third application is known as like spatial multiplexing where we can in, uh, obtain parallel channels and we can enhance the spectrum uh, efficiency or in increasing the data rate uh, in the uh, communication systems so this is actually the concept here the, about beamforming for the uh, spatial multiplexing or in the beamforming. So you can see here that we can we can direct our signal to certain certain uh, uh, like uh, uh, terminals and avoid it from the other. So if we can obtain like uh, uh, orthogonal. Uh, uh, patterns or or, or uh, uh, orthogonal loops like 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 in this in this case, actually, um, we can uh, send the same at the same time and on the same band to different terminals in the same time. So which means that we we have parallel channel. We have parallel channels, and this will give us some 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 kind of multiplexing. It is called spatial multiplexing. Um, uh, actually, it will increase the total capacity of the, uh, in in the uh, communication link. It is, by the way, this is one of the major uh, um, like uh, technologies used in 5G and also in LTAA 
LTE so the LTE advanced and also in the 5G networks to enhance the the bit rate in those systems and also it is used in uh, the uh, new generations of Wi-Fi like Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6 and also Wi-Fi 7 is coming so uh, most of them they they, they use uh, MIMO antennas in order to enhance the 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 data rate let us start with the beamforming. What is the concept of beamforming and how it works? The idea of the beamforming that we use multiple antennas and we use, uh, we use also adaptive weights because as we will see later that uh, the signal face at each antenna, the face of the signal at each antenna depends on the arrival the angle of arrival of the signal for example if we have one user here and we have another user here okay so the signal which come uh, or, or com that comes from that direction it will have certain like angle of arrival like azimuth angle and uh, uh, okay let us talk about the azimuth angle so it will it, it will arrive with angle certain angle phi because the elevation angle, usually we take it as as fixed value. We will talk about this later. And this will comes like angle phi 1, and here we have angle phi 2. The interesting part in this multiple antenna that we can approve that uh, the phase shift at each antenna of the signal depends on this arri uh, angle of arrival. Okay, then by using some adaptive complex weights, we can enhance the reception from certain angle and depress the, the, the reception from other angle. So we can enhance the signal from, from for example, uh, uh, terminal 1 and we can like reduce the signal from terminal 2. So it seems that, that it, this is actually virtual. This is virtual, uh, uh, like uh, radiation pattern. It will be like these antennas will be directed to this only to this user, and this one cannot get access to the network because this is the receiver for terminal one. So this interference has been depressed, has been like reduced by using this these multiple antennas. So we can we can control the beam form or the virtual pattern uh, radiation pattern of the antenna based on adjusting the adaptive weights of 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 these antennas as you can see that this is usually the wave comes as a plane wave and we assume that because when we are far away from the transmitter we can assume them like like the plane like in this in this way so it depends on the azimuth angle you can see phi then we can control them over those uh, uh, antenna weights. Antenna weights are complex number. What is the meaning of complex number? Uh, basically means that we can add or reduce the phase, magnitude and phase. This means that magnitude and phase. So we can enhance the phase from certain direction because we know that the phase of the received signal depends on this phi. So in that case, we can enhance the phase of the certain angle and, and uh, avoid uh, uh, other uh, direction of arrivals. As you can see in this figure, so um, we have multiple antennas here. So each antenna has certain location. You can select any of those antennas as a reference antenna. For example, we select this black one as a reference, but it doesn't mean that it should be the first one here. It can be any of those. You can uh, mark them as 000 antenna, which means that your reference antenna. Now, uh, uh, the angle face or the face of the received signal will be shifted depends on the location of these other antennas compared with this reference antenna. For example, the phase shift at antenna M, for example, this antenna M, equal to beta. Beta is, is the uh, uh, wave number, is 2 by divided by lambda. Lambda is the wavelength, which is equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency. Okay, and then we'll, uh, it will be XM. What is XM? Is the location of M antenna compared to the uh, to the uh, uh, reference antenna multiplied by cosine phi sine theta. Phi, as we said, uh, phi is the azimuth angle, and theta is the elevation angle. So uh, and uh, plus YM YM 
is that the because we know that in Cartesian space we have uh, x y z so you define what is x and y and z so it will be y m sine phi sine theta and finally z m the height times cosine theta okay and as i said theta is the elevation angle and phi is the azimuth angle and you can see what we mean here by azimuth angle and elevation angle elevation angle as it is clear from its name it is the related to the height and this is the azimuth angle okay usually uh, if we talk about multiple antenna uh, uh, on tower like on high place high place then it, it is okay to put this elevation angle like by over 290 degree compared with the transmitting antenna which or mobile phone which can be much lower so usually by over two is good so if you put by over two then this will be sine by over two is equal to one also sine by over uh, by over two equal to one cosine by over two equal to zero then the, the the angle in this case could be represented simply like pi beta times xm cosine phi plus ym sine phi that's th th that's all okay and uh, uh, because now we know that uh, uh, the angle of arrival of certain signal we know that for example well, uh, that the signal that we are interested in we know that uh, based on this antenna configuration we we can detect from from which uh, uh, angle of arrival that signal comes and then we can adjust our weights because this th those antennas will be connected to some to some complex weight which can add or reduce the face the received face so we can uh, make the faces of all antennas of that signal which comes from the direction of arrival uh, our interested direction of arrival we can put the faces to be like in phase and we can make the faces of that uh, of any of the signal comes from different direction of arrival but we are not interested in that signal that signal can be jamming signal can be also interference strong interference so we we can adjust those weights in order to make that signal out of phase and then it will cancel each other so this is the concept of the beamforming so beamforming working in this uh, under this concept by by knowing the face the faces of the signal which is depends on the direction of arrival of the electromagnetic wave plane Okay, this is the beamforming. What about the MIMO? MIMO means that we use multiple antennas, but not only in one in one terminal, but we can, we use multiple antennas at the transmitter as well as at the receiver. In that case, we can get like like uh, different benefits as we will see them. One of them is called spatial multiplexing, where we can increase the capacity by getting parallel channel with each terminal. So not not parallel channel for one terminal, but parallel channel. Uh, for each terminal as you can as you can see here so in that case we can greatly enhance the the uh, the performance and the capacity and the spectrum efficiency of the network yes so um uh, when we talk about channel capacity what we mean by channel capacity actually channel capacity is the upper uh, bound of information rate that we can achieve over uh, over wireless channel or over wire line channel in general so if you have transmitter here and you have channel and then you have a receiver okay and you have certain bandwidth that you can transmit your data okay in general, what is the upper bound of the data rate or the of, or of the information rate that you can send your data where it, it will be possible to decode it without error? That it is possible to use like decoding technique that you can decode this signal without without considerable error. Okay, so in that in that case, this 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 general and very general and very abstract problem has been addressed by uh, 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 Channon. It was, I think, maybe 70 years ago or more. 
so uh, 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 he was able to 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 address this 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 uh, uh, general uh, problem and uh, in, in very like nice and delicate uh, mathematics and he found that that the upper capacity is given by this formula for for a single channel so the capacity is given by the available bandwidth okay times log 2 1 plus the received power here received power from the transmitter divided by n0 is the noise spectral density remember that n0 equal to Boltzmann constant times what times the T effective noise temperature yes times the bandwidth the available bandwidth as you use more bandwidth then more noise will be absorbed or will be seen at the receiver side which will reduce the capacity okay and um, this is actually the upper bound so in order to increase uh, this the, the, the result will be in terms of bits per second okay so if for example you can you can just use some calculations for example if you have bandwidth equal to uh, 10 kilohertz the received power let's say is, is equal to one uh, 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 microwatt and you have n0 you have certain bandwidth then you can calculate what is the upper bound the upper bound this this means that uh, uh, this capacity cannot be exceeded okay this, this is the upper bound per single channel so don't think to get more than this this capacity as bits per second okay so this is the upper bound and and actually at the time when Shannon uh, discovered or 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 uh, uh, derived this equation um, uh, they were suspicious because because at that time the achieved uh, information rate of our channels were much much less than this upper bound uh, I don't remember now the numbers uh, uh, in, in, in certain figures, but, but just in general, for example, for certain channel, uh, wireline channel, uh, based on his equation, for example, it, it would be possible to achieve, let's say, 300 uh, kilobit per second. Uh, at that time, the, the, the upper bound, they were achieving maybe one kilo or something. So he, he, he expected that it could be like 300 times more or 400 times more it could be done. Uh, after using more sophisticated code encoding and coding techniques and actually this is what happened but nowadays we are quite close to this to this upper bound with, with the new uh, technologies yes so this is actually the upper bound and and you can see that in order to duplicate the capacity in order to duplicate the capacity you need what what you need to do mainly you need to duplicate the bandwidth and also duplicate the transmitted power because if you duplicate the transmitted power it will be 2b and this will be 2bw so 2 cancel 2 so nothing happened here but it will duplicate the capacity actually the increasing in the transmission power will not increase the capacity that much because it, it is under uh, inside this logarithmic equation which means that you need to increase the power a lot in order to duplicate the capacity this i can leave this as an exercise for you for example, if BW is fixed, okay, and zero is fixed, and I ask you a question, uh, 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 if you trans if your transmitted power it gives like certain BR, okay, let, let, let us say that BR equal to one microwatt, for example, how much power that it must be increased the received power in order to duplicate the capacity. You can find that it is not enough to just duplicate the received power. You need to increase the, the, the received power much in order to, to, to duplicate the capacity. But, but for the bandwidth, it's much easier that you increase the bandwidth. However, increasing the bandwidth is not, is not, is not uh, straightforward because as we mentioned before, the bandwidth is, is the, the most uh, scarce uh, uh, resources and we should be very, very careful in using the bandwidth, especially if we are talking about uh, the conventional or the low uh, frequency up to 5, five gigahertz because as we mentioned before, that uh, most of that uh, band is already licensed and uh, you might have very small band that you can use. And actually even the increasing the power is not uh, is not available for free because all the standards they have some upper also uh, transmit power that you can use so uh, uh, the story is not is not easy to solve in this case uh, or the problem is not easy to solve 
to increase the capacity. So you, we need always to think uh, about other methods to increase the capacity. Okay, now if you divide this C by the bandwidth, okay, then what, what we get is that, sorry, yeah, so if, if we uh, divide C by B, BW, like C divided by B, W is the bandwidth, then the, we will have bits bare second bare hertz. Actually, this also gives us the, the spectrum efficiency, the upper bound spectral efficiency that we can we can achieve as it is shown here. Okay. Yes. Uh, what uh, or how can we handle this problem? How can we increase the spectrum efficiency beyond this 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 upper bound? Or how to how can we increase the data rate? Actually, uh, uh, this could be done with the MIMO antenna. Why? Because in MIMO antennas, it has been approved that mathematically and actually also in practice that by using multiple antennas in the transmitter and multiple antennas at the, in the, at the receiver uh, side and we have like uh, environment, uh, rich environment of multibath. Uh, you remember that before we, we, we were talking about multipath as a big problem and as a big headache. But now with my channel capacity, with my multiplexing, the, uh, the, the, the multipath becomes a benefit. Multipath becomes like something desirable, you know. And uh, because of this multipath, it is possible now to get like orthogonal channels. So uh, in this way, so you can see. Uh, uh, if we use multiple antennas in the transmitter part and multiple antennas at the receiver part, and then when you transmit over this this antenna, so that this signal will, will reach to all antennas. So it will be like H11. It means that the channel between antenna 1 and receiver antenna 1 H12 means that that the, the, the signal comes from from this antenna from antenna to to to, to Y1. It depends on the uh, subscript how you define which one the first is for the transmitting or for the receiving antenna, and then finally. But uh, if you look to this, so the first was for the receiving antenna. So the final one is HNR. NT. So N NT is the number of antennas at the transmitter side, NR is the number of antennas at the receiver side. In this case, we can we can have like like matrix of, of the channel between the transmitter and the receiver. Actually, by using proper MIMO coding and MIMO decoding, or it, it can be also named as a spatial time coding technique, we will be able to see like parallel channels. So we, 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 we can uh, like resolve this matrix into orthogonal matrix or into like diagonal matrix, uh, more accurately diagonal matrix. So it, it will be like, like parallel channels. Of course, the number of parallel channels is not, it doesn't mean that it is uh, directly that full. So um, in general, the, the possible number of parallel channels is less than the minimum number of the antennas. So for example, just for example, if the number of transmit antenna is four antennas and the number of receiving antenna is eight antennas, in this case, the maximum number of parallel channels that we can see between the transmitter and the receiver is four. So this is the maximum number. The maximum number is always like, like uh, uh, upper bounded by the minimum number of the antennas between the transmitter and the receiver. Is it guaranteed that we will get four parallel channels in this case? The, the answer is no. It depends also on the environment itself. Is it very rich environment of multibath, environment Riley channel? Is it Riley channel with multibath? There, there are some certain conditions here in order to get four parallel channel. And actually, of, even for those parallel channels, there are some channels which has uh, much higher like, like capacity than the other channels. Okay, so in general, in general, this is the, 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 the received signal based on the transmitted signal, and, and this is actually the capacity, the instantaneous capacity that we can, that we can obtain. Okay, so the MIMO capacity, actually, we can put it in this form. So this is the spectrum efficiency, actually, the capacity divided by the bandwidth, available bandwidth, is the summation. Why we put summation? It is like summation of parallel channels, but remember that we transmit in the same time and in the same band. 
which means that we have like parallel channels for free just by using multiple antennas at the transmitter and multiple antennas at the receiver then we enhance the capacity of the system that much so it is very great like uh, the, the, the technology um, uh, it is one of the like amazing uh, techniques applied in the advanced and modern telecommunication systems so remember that this is important to remember that multipath we uh, with MIMO with 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 this uh, special multiplexing techniques we transfer the multipath from being a headache from being a problem to a benefit where it gave us a lot of free capacity that we can we can use. Okay, so this is the capacity. This is this is that uh, here we 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 didn't like uh, optimize for the transmit power at each antenna. We just we take the power of at the transmit antenna. We divide it into the number of transmit antenna evenly. Okay, and then this is this will be the 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 uh, uh, received power. Of course, here we assume it normalized system, but in general here it should be also multiplied by the channel gain. Okay, or sigma for actually it will should be multiplied by sigma k. Should be multiplied by sigma k. Sigma k is the uh, related to the. Uh, eigenvalue of the channel of the square of the channel but anyhow or, or, or singular value decomposition of the of the channel but we will not go in that in that details right now but remember here I think it was it was maybe in the previous yes yes this one sigma this is sigma uh, k square so it, it is not there so it should be there as well or we use the channel gain it represents actually the channel gain for every like parallel channel okay yes so sigma k itself is called the singular value of the channel matrix but it should be here as well Yes, yeah, so in, in the multiple antennas, uh, remember that uh, we can use them in three different uh, technologies, or we can use them to in, in the three scenarios. We can use multiple antennas as beamforming. Beamforming, it means that we direct the, the radiation pattern of the antenna toward the, um, uh, the, the interested uh, user that we want to enhance it, it, it is link, and also to make it like... Uh, um, uh, like to depress or or to uh, reduce the signal from other directions which can can be like um, uh, noise or interference so the idea of using beamforming is to maximize the signal to interference and noise ratio and the best channel type in this case that we have line of sight so remember beamforming to work good and good way we need line of sight or ratio channel so there should be one strong path between the transmitter and the receiver okay in case of Riley channel that we don't have line of sight and we have just non line of sight environment then the best thing is to use MIMO a channel or a spatial multiplexing where we can get parallel transmission and we then we get higher data rate we, we get much higher spectrum efficiency and the third application or scenario is using multiple antennas for diversity as we have seen already where we can uh, we can have higher performance lower bit error rate lower packet losses by increasing the reliability and increasing the 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 or, or minimizing the outage of the system by using multiple antennas so the best channel type in this case of course in in non line of sight and fading the channel or in ratio channel so it works in in, in wider application Applications. The diversity we have transmitter diversity and but but most likely or most of the system are based on receiver diversity but we have also transmitter diversity especially when the receiver like mobile phone the it cannot we, we cannot implement multiple antennas there so we can also use use transmit diversity and most of the systems now use also transmit diversity for mobile phones. 
okay uh, that's all about uh, today uh, in, in this uh, clip 3 so we have covered the major uh, benefits of using antennas of course we we um, i tried my best to av to avoid uh, deep math uh, most of these topics actually for those who are interested in them so we have them we had them before as like uh, complete courses actually we had course about about broadband communication where it was completely based on this MIMO with all like math derivations we had courses about like uh, this performing before and and uh, several courses that we had but now we try to to uh, to keep uh, uh, the a treatment of the analysis as light as possible and in the same time we concentrate more about the concept and the foundation uh, thank you very much and uh, see you in 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 part four of this course bye